Schaub gets up and hammers it home. Who bounces it inside to Mooney, who jams it home. To a cutting Jogo for the two-handed jam. It's to Fluger for the two-handed jam. Swatted by Durham. Jams with two. Another rejection. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray coming to you this week from the beautiful Rolfs Athletics Hall, the new practice facility for both Notre Dame basketball programs. So great to be in here. We're going to talk about that a lot during the show, but we got to start with a much needed win over the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. Jack, we needed that one bad, and I'm really proud of our group because we didn't get off to a very good start offensively, but we figured it out the end of the first half and had a very effective and second half. And we're going to show you all the highlights of that win by taking you across the street to Purcell Pavilion right after this timeout. To make the kind of progress you know this team can make, you knew you needed a win over Georgia Tech. So you set a Mike Bray Notre Dame record. You got rid of the sport code before the game began. <laughs> I rolled my sleeves up in front of him in the huddle saying, you know, it's a workmanlike night. Let's just grind at it and and uh, and let's have fun going for it. But Jack, we, we needed a league win. There was no question about it. And we certainly didn't start off very well offensively, even though again, which has been a little bit of the story of this group, we got pretty good shots. We just couldn't make them early. It was remarkable. Even the building was like, I'm not quite sure I believe what I'm seeing. Your team missed 25 of their first 29 shots, and then it suddenly changed. You know, it's it's amazing. The game is so fragile, and uh, thankfully, we got a couple offensive rebounds just to keep us within striking distance, and our defense was good enough where they couldn't get away from us while we were missing all those shots. But I thought... You know, the last nine minutes of the first half, we started to find some gaps and some holes against the very good zone defense that Georgia Tech plays, and then better in the second half. You hit a stretch where you made six of your eight shots and you tied the game at 24. What changed in that stretch? You know, I, I think just um, probably moved it a little bit more, a couple more passes. We got a couple putbacks. We got a couple drives to the bucket. We hit the foul line area. Uh, and then all of a sudden you make one or two and you start to feel a little better about yourself. And Nate Lyshevsky started it with a big three. It's only three of the game, but it was big. It was big. His five points off the bench were like 20 points off the bench because we couldn't find anything. So he did give us a little bit of a lift there scoring the ball. And how about his rejection of the DeVoe layup right at the first half buzz? Well, that that helped because, you know, you give up a layup there and they've got momentum at halftime, but we blocked that, you know, and we felt we found a rhythm offensively. So you felt going into the second half, you were going to play better on the offensive end. And you take the lead for just the second time in the game since 6-5 early on a drive layup by T.J. Gibbs, who followed his own shot. He had 18 in the second half, 20 points for the game, five assists, four steals. You know, I thought maybe his best league game, no question about it, and he had been struggling, but for him uh, to kind of set a tone for us, I thought he set a tone for us defensively as well, four steals, he was making plays for us. Uh, you know, he, he can really make us go here down the stretch. You had recognized that he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. He's actually been doing it the entire season. It was getting really tough the last couple of weeks. You've worked with him a lot. You even took him to the old practice yeah. facility, the pit, the day before the game. We went back to the pit, you know, and, and uh, it's a drill where we don't shoot any threes at all. We just shoot some 10 and 12 footers. And, and then maybe the biggest part of it was the message that I wanted. I said, if you don't smile, during the game. We're gonna, we gotta make sure we smile at each other. I just wanna try and loosen him up. He has had a lot on him, you know. A lot of response, other guys waiting on young guys. Rex goes down, you know. He has had to try and figure out how to do all that, and I'm sensitive to that moving forward. And another guy who's been struggling because he's coming back from major knee surgery, DJ Harvey, he's still rehabbing to a certain degree, and fans don't see that. They just see the potential. But boy, did he play well for you. 18 points and eight rebounds. I thought in the last Last week, um, 
we, we have a, a better frame of mind. He's putting less pressure on himself. He and TJ are similar, where they put the weight of the world on him and maybe force plays sometimes. The, you know, DJ let the game come to him. And when he sticks his nose in there and rebounds on both ends of the floor, he's better all around. And it was that combo that Gibbs layup gave you the lead, then... Harvey follows with a three, and you never trail again for the rest of the second half. You end up with 45 points. Again, can you carry that over to the next game? You know, we certainly, you know, are going to try and do that. We have not been able to be in an offensive rhythm for 40 minutes other than maybe at Boston College this year. So that is the goal. Um, we've been good in second halves, though, offensively, which has always given us a chance. Um, but we got to continue to share the ball. We're good with it. We pass the ball well. We don't turn the ball over. And I think we're getting good shots. So we just got to keep working on that. And there was another give sequence that gave you the lead for good. He comes up with a three. Then he comes up with a steal and feeds Prentice Hub. Hub was really solid. 13 points, three assists, and five rebounds. I, I you know, in the midst of everything, I think Prentice Hub is getting very comfortable as a college guard in the best league in America. He's getting more confident. He's scoring for us, which we need him to do. He's great with the basketball. He's in the top seven assist to turnover in our league. I think he's playing really well right now. And you took your first 10-point lead of the night on a great job of the offensive glass by John Mooney. Couple of offensive rebounds, converts the second one. He ends up with his 15th double-double of the season. Leads the league, 11 points, 14 rebounds. He's the only player in the ACC to average double-digit rebounds per game. Just an amazing year by Johnny Mooney. There's no question about it. He sets himself up as he comes back as a senior, as an All-American candidate and a first-team All-League guy and a Player of the Year candidate. Um, but there's no question his offensive rebounding and energy got us over the hump and got us a little bit of a couple possession lead to escape the other night. The Irish pick up their second win in three ACC games, a 69-59 home win over Georgia Tech. And when we come back, we will take you behind the scenes of that much needed win. One of the keys to Notre Dame bouncing back from not only its road loss to Miami, but its sub-zero offensive start against Georgia Tech was leadership. The voices of the team's two most veteran captains, one out for the season with a knee injury, the other continuing to battle on the court every day, played a huge role in the victory. It's just all about our movement, boys. Offense and defense. Yep. Got to be some dogs, too, man. Gibbs fakes, spins, the runner is good. What a great win. Big time defense. All right, keep that active hands going, baby. We're getting a lot of deflections and steals right now. You really got on the offensive board. Some big time stuff. In the corner, Harvey for three. Got it! Notre Dame leads. Let's use this week to get better, right? February's our month. Hey, why not us? Gibbs now driving down the lane, jump stop, runner off the glass and in. DJ flexes a little bit, looks at the stands, lets out a roar. The Notre Dame pulls away with a 10-point home win. Mike Bray's team back in the win column. Let's, let's be a great story. Big picture, right? Big picture. All right, all right. You haven't had Rex on the floor in a game since Purdue, but he's been around the team. He's very active. Talk about the job he did helping lead your team during the Georgia Tech game. I thought he was great in our huddles. By the time I got to the media timeout huddles, he had already been in there making key points pumping guys up, getting them to believe, reinforcing things that we talk about. He, he's really found a niche to help. And, and again, T.J. Gibbs, I thought, really led well, too. T.J. Gibbs really misses having him on the court to help him lead with him. That, that's been a void for our team, not only Rex's talent, but that voice and that older guy out there. So we've tried to piece it together, and I, Rex has given us what he can from the sideline. The last segment you talked about it was TJ's best game production-wise in ACC play. Was it his best game of the year leadership? -wise? I would say, I would say so. I thought his preparation leading up, head was clear, not feeling the weight of the world. I tried to get it off him. Uh, I told him, I said, well, you and I are going to smile at each other during the game, and. 
you know, we laughed a couple times with some of the crazy plays that went on, and, and, and that's how he's got to play the rest of the season. And the kid gives you everything he has, and he just wants it so bad for his team that he can tie himself up in knots sometimes. TJ and Rex have developed a very close relationship over the years, a relationship that is very apparent in this week's edition of the Inside Notre Dame Basketball Players Fast Break. Welcome to Notre Dame Men's Basketball Fast Break. I'm TJ Gibbs here with Rex Fluger. Uh, Rex, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I need your best answers. Um, what is your favorite food? I'll have to go with pizza. Uh, what, who is your celebrity crush? Celebrity like Margot Robbie. North or South Dining Hall? Uh, south, gotta say loyal. Uh, favorite TV show? Uh, Game of Thrones, easy. Favorite NBA player? Klay Thompson. Favorite NBA team? Los Angeles Lakers. Dream three-on-three -three team? Dream three-on-three -three team. Uh, I would go with Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. Um, if you had to kill off one person on our team, who would it be? <laughs> Do I give a serious answer to this? I'm a selfless guy, so I would say myself because I don't want anyone else to suffer. I don't like that. <laughs> um, favorite Coach Swan line? Oh, dominate. Uh, fastest on the team? TJ Gibbs. Slowest on the team? TJ Gibbs. Funniest on the team? I hate to say this, but Prentice is pretty freaking funny. He's funnier than me? You laugh at most of your own jokes. So what? You gotta let people come in and laugh, uh, then you can smartest, laugh. Smartest on the team? Liam Nelligan. Worst dancer on the team? I say Dane just because I don't think he knows how to move. If you had to be stuck with somebody on the team for 24 hours, who's the person you would least like to be stuck with? Least likely. Um, I've been with you for 24 hours before. Yeah. That one hurt. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say you. But I, 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 you inferred it by... Okay. Uh, <laughs> who would you rather hang out with, me or Prentice? I'll go with you, my dog, you know? Um, if John Mooney and a dog, we're stuck in a fire, who would you save? I feel like John could take care of himself, right? That's not in fast break with you. <laughs> Those guys, clearly, really, really close. Really close, and that's why you love coaching here, Jack. The personalities, the sense of humor, we spend so much time together, we better be able to laugh at each other every now and then. And you recruit for fit, for compatibility. It's an important part of the makeup of this team. No, there's no question. There is a cultural fit to the program. There's a, certainly a cultural fit to this university. But Rex Fluger and TJ Gibbs are two of my all-time favorites because I love being around their personalities every day. When we come back, we will give you a tour of this special new building, the new Notre Dame basketball practice facility. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Basketball, coming to you this week from the brand new Notre Dame Basketball Practice Facility, Rolf's Athletics Hall. We think we have selected the perfect person to begin your introduction to this new facility, a young man who excelled as a player at Notre Dame and is now excelling as an assistant coach, Ryan Ayers. Let's check out the new home of Notre Dame Basketball. Come on. First stop, we gotta check out that new team room. Now to the locker room. Not many people get to see this. This is where the brotherhood really begins. All right, people, we're entering the weight room. World-class facility here. Starts here every offseason, every year. Player development is key for us in this program as each year we're going to push you to your limit. On the court here, baby, this is where we grind each and every day. Got the NBA players here behind me. We want to keep developing guys to get to that next level. We really do got it all here. But to understand why we got it, let me take you back to where Notre Dame basketball was built. The pit. It's not just a gym. It's a mentality. It's that can't-miss attitude, that unrelenting grind, the beginning of a brotherhood. It was our oasis, a lonely place, but a pure happiness where shots will echo for the rest of time. time. Now that attitude can't change. This new home will push you harder, make you better, turn you into the man you want to be. <laughs> but that's only if you work for a player. This new facility will change Notre Dame basketball forever. And we built it together. One, two, three, go. Mike, you were involved in the entire process of developing this building. Now that you're in here, has it turned out the way you'd hoped? Even more so. It's it's this is really exciting, Jack. We needed it. There's no question about it. Uh, 
the people we're competing against in this Atlantic Coast Conference. But certainly it helps in recruiting. Don't get me wrong. But the kind of guys we get, these four and sometimes five-year guys that are workers and are gym rats, it's even a better laboratory, a more efficient laboratory for them to get better. Guys get better here. And what a great laboratory to do it in. This week's Ask Coach Bray question and the Vivid Seats performance of the week are coming up right after this time up. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. This week's question comes from diehard fan Gary Rivers Gary. of Mishawaka. Coach, John Mooney's play has been off the charts this season. Did you see this coming? He's even surprised me. I thought he would be a big impact guy, but you heard me say he wasn't crushing it in the Bahamas. And even early in the season, it wasn't this consistent. But I'm so thrilled for him. He deserves it. He's one of those guys that is a worker and is very focused and right now is playing as well as any guy, anybody in our league. With 11 points and 14 rebounds, John Mooney did record his league-leading 15th double-double of the season against Georgia Tech. But the Notre Dame ticket exchange, powered by Vivid Seats' performance of the week, goes to fellow captain T.J. Gibbs, who delivered a season-high 20 points, along with five assists and four steals. Gibbs fakes, spins, the runner is good. Gibbs for three, got it, and somehow that's justice. Gibbs now driving down the lane, jump stop, runner off the glass and in. TJ flexes a little bit, looks at the stands, lets out a roar. That Rebound Mooney, up top hub, right side Gibbs for three, got it, huge! And his pass is stolen away by Gibbs. Here comes Gibbs again, throws it underneath the hub, who lays it up and in, and Notre Dame leads. I know you love the numbers TJ put up in the game. I know you loved his leadership, but what you may have loved the most is the return of the TJ Gibbs smile. Yeah, when he's playing with that personality and positivity coming off of him instead of, oh, you know, I'm tired, I, I can't believe I made a mistake or I missed a shot, he's much better and it permeates through our team. Did it carry over to practice this week? Yeah, yeah, we've had a good week of practice. You know, Monday, Tuesday was good to get a little bit of rest, uh, but then we got back into it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, tune up for Virginia. We've had really good energy. You know, when you win two or three, you're feeling better about yourself. And that is good, because you heard Coach mention Virginia. That's on the road. That's a challenge. Every ACC game is a challenge. There are two coming up. We'll look at both of them right after this timeout. Going on the road to take on fourth-ranked Virginia, a team in a style you've always had trouble with, a huge challenge. But this year, win or lose, your team is really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I think it's a great challenge for us. And I think our group wants to bounce back as far as competing for 40 minutes, because it's the one game here at home where we hung our heads a little bit. And, and, and we were very disappointed about that, uh, addressed it in practice the next day. And I think we've been good ever since. Um, but it'll be an unbelievable atmosphere, a veteran Virginia team, and we're gonna have to really be good and smart and battle. Uh, and, and, but we're excited about the challenge. And you're on the best role you've been in in conference play, two wins in three games. Virginia's a big hurdle, but then on Tuesday, you have a Wake Forest team coming in here that right now is one game behind you in the standings, a game that's not only very gettable, but a game I know in your mind you think you should win. Well, you know, you look, and I, I told our guys the other night after Georgia Tech, I said, we're two and one in February. We tried to turn the page in February. Let's see if we can generate some momentum and get on a little run here down the stretch and see where that leaves us heading to Charlotte. And we are very interested to see where Notre Dame is at after this week. We'll be back next week with all the highlights of the Virginia and Wake Forest games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and SiriusXM.